Welcome to Accounting with Audra. In this video on Introduction to Accounting, I'm going to talk about how companies account for the purchase of and sale of inventory in their financial statements. We'll look at the basics, journal entries that are required, the various different ways that you account for those purchases of inventory moving forward in the financial statements, and then we'll talk about the impact of the various scenarios on gross profit in this video. So let's start off with really simple, a company decides that they're going to purchase t-shirts that they're going to on sale to customers. The initial purchase of the t-shirts, and this example we're going to say $10,000, is a debit to the asset account for inventory. And then there's a credit for the fact that you would pay cash or perhaps buy them on account accounts payable for the $10,000. At the time of the purchase of those t-shirts, notice the only impact is to the balance sheet. There is no expense that is occurring for the company in the financials, just cash going out, inventory coming onto the balance sheet. We don't actually account for the purchase of those t-shirts as an expense in the financial statements until those t-shirts are later sold. This is part of what's considered the matching principle in accounting. So let's now assume that all of the t-shirts that were originally purchased are sold to customers for $14,000 throughout the year. At the time of the sale, the company would debit cash for $14,000, what they received from their customers, and credit sales revenue in the income statement for $14,000. Additionally, what companies would do is debit a new account. This account is called cost of goods sold. So it's what is the expense associated with the initial purchase of those t-shirts. The t-shirts were purchased for $10,000, so an expense, cost of goods sold, is debited for $10,000. Inventory is also reduced, it's no longer on the books, so inventory is credited for $10,000. The cash in the inventory accounts adjust the balance sheet. The balance sheet essentially has gone up by $4,000 because the company has made a net $4,000 on the sale. Likewise, the income statement is also impacted for the sales revenue and the cost of the expenses. So we have a net increase in assets of 4,000 and on the income statement, there's a net positive impact of $4,000, sales revenue minus cost of goods sold. We call that gross profit. So the gross profit in this example is $4,000. So let's now assume we put some dates in our example. Assume on January 15th, a company purchases 100 t-shirts and they pay $10 a piece for each t-shirt. And then on June 20th, the company purchases an additional 100 t-shirts and this time they pay $12. So the cost of those same t-shirts has actually gone up a little bit more. So they had to pay a little bit more later in the year for buying their supplies. And then we're going to assume that this same company throughout the year sells, we'll say June 30th, 120 of the total t-shirts they had purchased for a total profit of $2,000, or I should say, for a total revenue of $2,000. How do I determine the total amount of cost of shirts sold? We paid two different prices at two different times during the year. The nice part is, in the world of accounting, they give us some options. Option one is using a method called the weighted average method for inventory. Option two is the first in first out method, also known as FIFO. And option three is last in first out, known as the LIFO method. I'm gonna walk through each of these methods, how they're calculated, and then the, how that impacts our general entries, gross profit, and inventory on the balance sheet for a company. So let's start with the weighted average method. Again, our facts, we have two purchase dates and we're selling 120 of these t-shirts. What weighted average does is it takes all of the inventory on hand all the purchases on hand and averages it out. So it gives an average price of a t-shirt to each item. So in this case, we'll add together all of our costs and divide it by the number of t-shirts. We bought 100 t-shirts for $10 and 100 t-shirts for 1,200. So that's 1,000 plus 1,200 equals a total purchase price cost of $2,200. We'll then divide that 2,200 by 200 t-shirts, the total amount of inventory we received. And that gives us an actual blended price of $11. So as we sell these t-shirts, instead of saying a t-shirt sold for 10 or a t-shirt sold for 12, we're actually gonna say that each t-shirt sold, the cost associated with that t-shirt is $11.
So in our instance here, we would have a cost of 11 times 120 or $1,320 of expense associated with the sale of these t-shirts. Let's now look at the FIFO method. So under the FIFO method, what we're doing is saying the first t-shirts that I purchased are going to be the first t-shirts that I sold. So I'm actually going to track which t-shirts I've sold thinking about like you stacked them in a pile and you're basically selling those t-shirts that are at the bottom of the pile first. So looking at the first t-shirts I pur purchased, I purchased 100 at 10. Here I'm selling 120, so I'm gonna stack them to get to 120. So if I take that first 100 times $10, I have $1,000 associated with the 100 t-shirts, and then I know that I sold another 20, so I've gotta take that out of the second bucket that I purchased. So 20 t-shirts at $12 gives me 240. The total cost for associated with all 120 t-shirts in this instance is 1,240. So it's not what I just had in my last example, it's a little bit different. If I wanted to look at what the per shirt cost is under this method, it's $10.33 each. A total cost associated with the sale of 1240 divided by 120 shirts. Now that per shirt balance is gonna change with every sale because I have a different amount that I'm using. I'm not under the weighted average. Finally, Let's go ahead and look at the LIFO method. The LIFO method says the last t-shirts I bought are the ones I'm gonna sell first. So I'm actually selling the ones on the top of the pile in this instance. So I'm gonna start with the last ones I purchased, which are $12 each. So 100 tees at $12 is 1,200. And then I still need 20 more. So I'm gonna take the other 20 from the bottom of the pile, the stuff I bought first. So 20 times 10 is 200. My total price for those shirts is $1,400. Again, if I wanna look at the per shirt cost based on this sale, it's $1,167. You can see that what's happening is the shirt cost is higher than in the FIFO because the stuff I purchased at a later date was more expensive. This again would vary depending on whether or not the cost of the goods that I'm selling is increasing or decreasing over time. Let's now look at how all three examples compare and how they impact the gross profit of a company. So in all three instances, the sales revenue is gonna be the same. I sold 120 t-shirts for a total of $2,000, but the cost of goods sold that we just computed is gonna vary. So in the first instance, we determined that we had $11 per shirt value. So our cost of goods sold is 1320 and our gross profit, the revenue minus cost of goods sold is $680. Under the FIFO method, same revenue, but my cost of goods sold is $1,240. So my gross profit in this instance is $760. And under the LIFO method, again, same sales revenue, but this time my cost of goods sold is $1,400. So my gross profit is $600. So what's interesting here is my gross profit varies depending on what method I'm under. But the assumption is over time, you're gonna sell every piece of inventory you bought. So if you were to spread out over five or 10 years, over time, your profit will be the same answer no matter what method you picked. It's just that the one year answer differs based on whether you're FIFO, LIFO, or weighted average, and whether the purchase price of what you're buying is increasing over time, decreasing over time, or staying constant. The key is no matter what option you pick, you have to be consistent from year to year. So companies cannot switch back and forth. Okay, so using the same math, the other thing that we can determine is what is the residual inventory on the balance sheet at the end of the year? It's what we haven't sold, right? So when we're looking at our residual inventory, we're first gonna say, what did we pay for all of it? We paid $2,200. That was the total cost we determined earlier on. So our inventory based on purchase was 2,200. What we've sold to customers under the weighted average method is 30, 1320, and our ending inventory on the balance sheet in this case is 880. So moving forward in the future, the value that's gonna be associated with selling those shirts in another year is $880. Under the FIFO method, same thing. My purchase price is exactly the same. It's just what I sold value-wise is less under the FIFO method. So my ending inventory is 960. And again, under the LIFO method, same purchase, 
my ending inventory here is $800. Okay, one more thing to look at is just journal entries again in this example. So no matter what method I'm using, the purchase of my inventory is the same journal entry under all three methods. Whatever I paid for that inventory, I'm debiting the inventory, I'm crediting cash. So on January 15th, I would have debited inventory for the first purchase of 10 times 100 shirts or 1,000 and cash went out the door. And on June 20th, same thing, I bought inventory for 1,200. So my balance sheet would show the 2,200 we just talked about. Then I'm going to sell on June 30th shirts 120 at 2,000 of revenue. So under all three methods, same thing. The total revenue I'm booking is exactly the same. It's just the final journal entry associated with cost of good sold, or in other words, the expenses. So here on June 30th, I would debit cost of goods sold 1320 for weighted average, 1240 for FIFO, and 1400 for LIFO. So just another way to think about the previous points I was pointing out with respect to gross profit and ending inventory. Hopefully this video gave you a great understanding of the basics of inventory methods. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to publish additional videos on more detailed calculations with respect to FIFO and LIFO when you have multiple purchases and you're selling in between purchase dates, as well as get into videos on cost accounting issues that get more into things like raw materials, work in process, and finished goods.